What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing on the bacon MLB DFS video. This is Wednesday. It is April 26th, and we are back. Just like with any Wednesday, we have early games, then we have later games during the day. So um, they'll be split up between slates, probably early only in main. So definitely check that out. Uh, looking on right now, I don't see a slate for tomorrow. So that's we'll, we're kind of waiting for that. Um, I'm having to do this video a little bit earlier today because I will be busy all night and I wanted to get this out to you guys. But uh, some of the pitching matchups are not here yet, so that we'll just we'll just deal with that when we get to it. That's when they come out. They'll be part of our uh, premium stuff. They'll be part of our um, information on the website to help you out on the article and stuff like that. So you can find today's article down below in the description of this video. If this is the first time you've been to this channel, welcome and please. Hit that like button if you find this helpful. Hit that subscribe button. Every day we just keep getting more subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. Let's and the goal is 10,000 YouTube subscribers before the All Star break. So we got a little less than two, two and a half months, almost about three months to go. So I think we can do it easily. Also looking for uh, 10,000 on Twitter at advisors underscore team. So welcome here. Again, if this video gets, we have contests all the time. If this video gets 50 likes, one random person will be chosen to get a free month um, of MLB DFS content brought to you by FantasyTeamAdvisor.com. If you have won in the past, I have tried to reach out to you. Please reach out to me at advisors underscore team or email me support at FantasyTeamAdvisor.com so I can get you set up. Um, and also, if you want another chance to win a free month, all you got to do is like the video, be a subscriber, and tell me who's going to hit a home run and what inning you're going to hit it in, or they're going to hit it in. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Not as many amazing pitchers as we've had in other slates. I think it's kind of lining up to have all the studs um, in the next couple of days on one slate, so we'll kind of see how that goes. So, first game on the slate, Rangers at the Reds, John Gray versus Graham Ashcraft. John Gray hit 65 plate appearances, a 293 batting average, 24.6K. This is being played in Cincinnati, so I don't mind the Cincinnati stack here. So just looking at the bats that have had success against John Gray in the past. Will Myers, 14 for 42, four doubles, three home runs, batting 333. Kevin Newman, one for five with a double. Um, and that's kind of really it. Will Myers seen John Gray a ton as Will was in San Diego and John was in Colorado there, so they did see a ton. He could go under the radar there. Um, looking at that, it just depends. Depends on, you know, you always got TJ Friedel or Friedel there. Um, I would look at the lineup for whatever lineup, whenever it comes out, look at the top four or five bats and go with that. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for Cincinnati. On the flip side of that, Graham Ashcraft has never faced them before. Again, if you've you know, you've been here before. You know I love me a pitcher against a team who's never faced him before in a GPP situation. So that's kind of where I'm at on that one. Um, I won't have any – I don't think I'll have any John Gray uh, at all today, but I will have some Ashcraft here. Next game, the Red Sox at the uh, Orioles. You got Tanner Houck versus Tyler Wells. You got Houck at 55 plate appearances, a 250 batting average, and 23.6K percentage against the Orioles. Flip side of that, Tyler Wells, 27 plate appearances at only 11.1K percentage, a 231 batting average. So what Baltimore bats have had success or jump out at me against Tanner Houck in this one? If it'll load, I'll tell you. Why isn't that loading? Weird. Um, I don't know why it's not loading right now. Uh, maybe we'll come back to it. Uh, Tyler Wells. So here's the thing. We know the Red Sox can hit, but their pitching has been hit or miss this season so far. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about either of these pitchers. I honestly don't think I'll have exposure to either of them. Uh, I will be... I will be looking at Tyler Wells a little bit here. Maybe GPP. Probably GPP for both. Um, it just... It really depends on when you build your lineups out the other pitching out there and it depends on how many games are going to be on each slate and how you really want to attack uh, like an early only slate or a main slate so i'll have some exposure to tyler wells i don't think i'll have any exposure to hauk in this one 
White Sox said the Blue Jays is next. You got Michael Kopech versus Yusei Kikuchi. Kopech, 32 plate appearances, a 321 batting average against him. Striking out only 12.5K. That's kind of crazy because, well, pre-injury, he was, you know, throwing 100 miles an hour, striking people out. Numbers aren't the best here. Um, and Toronto's a good offensive team. Kikuchi, on the other hand, 31 plate appearances, 22.6K percentage, and only a 192 batting average. Now, last uh, time Kikuchi pitched, was it Friday, I believe? Um, Thursday or Friday. I was like, I want to take him a little bit against the Yankees, but he is not that good of a pitcher. But the Yankees are in a slump, and he was able to have a pretty good game. Same thing kind of here with the White Sox. Um, It's kind of crazy. So... I don't mind either of these pitchers. I think if I'm leaning somewhere, I would be taking Kikuchi over Kopech here. I want to see if this would load up, and it did for whatever reason. So what Blue Jays bats have had success against Kopech? Whit Merrifield, 2 for 12 with a home run. Vlad, 0 for 3, doesn't matter. Santiago, Espinal, um, 2 for 3. Bobochet, 2 for 3. Espinal has a home run. Danny Jansen has a home run. Matt Chapman's one for two. So, honestly, don't mind a Toronto stack there at all. Kikuchi, I like him here. I'm not going to – I won't have any White Sox bats against him. Rockies at the Guardians. You got Noah Davis first to be announced. Honestly, with the other pitchers on the slate, I'm not going to – I won't even bother with this game. Um, Yeah, I won't even bother there. Then you got the Yankees at the Twins is next. Domingo Herman versus Kenta Maeda. Uh, Herman, 69 plate appearances, a 222 batting average, 31.9K percentage. That that percentage is high. If you recall a couple of years, or a couple of years, his last start um, against Minnesota was when uh, Rocco Baldelli cried about it. Um, I think he had 11 or 12 strikeouts and uh, dominated the Twins. So he's got good success. They just saw him not too long ago. So that's the only kind of caveat and downfall because they just saw him. Um, but he could come through here. We could look at good things. So I don't mind Domingo Herman. Kid to Maeda, 64 plate appearance, a 167 batting average. I like him here just because of the Yankees are struggling. But again, the Yankees are a very good hitting team. If they get out of that struggle there, I mean, they could hit Maeda pretty well. So that's the only kind of thing that I'm thinking about there. Um, I don't mind either of these pitchers. Probably looking more of a GPP here. I don't know if I trust either of them in cash. Then the Tigers at the Brewers is next. Michael Lorenzen versus Freddie Peralta. Lorenzen, 44 plate appearances, a 179 batting average. Then you got Freddie Peralta against the Tigers. You've got 32 plate appearances, a 138 batting average, and 34.4K percentage there. So looking at that, um, it's really, you know, Lorenzen, his last start on April 21st against Baltimore, five innings. No earned runs, a .80 whip, and a 7.20 K per nine. Had his, That was his second outing. Did really well there. I don't know if I trust him, though. Uh, I would throw both of these guys in GPP for sure if you're making multiple lineups. But, again, it might be harder to trust them in cash. Peralta's numbers, um, I mean, it's the Tigers. It's in Milwaukee. I don't mind either of these. I just don't know if I trust them for cash. Then you got the Royals at the Diamondbacks. You got uh, to be announced with Kansas City. And then Zach Gallen against Kansas City. 33 plate appearances, 179 batting average, striking out 27.3% of those batters. I do like Gallen here. Uh, we've used him lately. Every time he's, it seems like every time he is up to bat, to pitch each time, he's either in a good spot or he has a great game. Overall, he's ranked 14th of all the pitchers. Um, I mean,. It's coming off seven innings against San Diego, 14.14K per nine. No earned runs there. Hasn't had any earned runs since April 4th, his second start of the season against San Diego. Um, Hasn't faced Kansas City this year. But like I said, take a pitcher against Kansas City, and nine times out of ten, you're going to have a really good day. So I will be all over Zach Gallen in this one. He might even be one of the top three pitchers on the slate. Dodgers at the Pirates is next. Don't know who's pitching for the Dodgers yet. Uh, Contreras is next, which is still crazy to think the Pirates are doing so good. They just locked up Brian Reynolds, uh, which I didn't think they would. Um, And I read something funny that 
now with Pittsburgh signing Brian Reynolds to over $100 million, there's only three teams that have not ever spent over $100 million on one person. Can anyone name those three teams? Go. But anyway, Contreras, eight plate appearance. Hasn't seen him much. 167 batting average. Honestly, don't mind Contreras here. I know it's the Dodgers. I would be looking more for GPP just because it is the Dodgers. But Pirates are on, the roll, on a roll right now. Uh, Houston at Tampa Bay, you got Hunter Brown versus to be announced. Hunter Brown, 11 plate appearances, 200 batting average, striking out 36.4. So obviously those numbers are skewed due to the fact of it being, you know, eight, 11 plate appearances. I don't mind Hunter Brown here. I think he'll go under own because Tampa Bay is the best team. Um, but I don't mind Hunter Brown here at all. Mariners at the Phillies, you got Marco Gonzalez versus Taiwan Walker. Gonzalez, 32 plate appearances, a 258 batting average, striking out 15.6. And then Walker, on the other hand, 22 plate appearances, a 136 batting average, striking out 27.3% of those batters. I don't mind either of these guys. I think if I'm playing, Walker would be my cash option. Marco Gonzalez would be my GPP. Now, bats, Phillies bats that have had success against Marco Gonzalez here, there's not much. Castellanos, three for nine with a double. Uh, Brandon Marsh, two for six with a double. Schwarber's one for two. Christian Pache's two for five with a double. So, I mean, there's not much going on. Flip side of that, the Mariners bats that have had success against Taiwan Walker. If we were to look into that real quick. AJ Pollock, 0 for nine. Yeah, I mean, there's not much. There's not much at all here. Teoscar Hernandez jumps that number up because he's one for two with a home run bad 500 so yeah i mean you could go to oscar hernandez there but yeah there's not much going on um i like both of these guys like i said walker more cash uh gonzalez more gpp you got the nationals at the mets mckenzie gore versus kodai singa uh gore five plate appearances 400 batting average not much going on i'm looking 100 i'm not even looking at gore i'm looking at singa here for pitching and i'm looking at um definitely looking at the Mets as a stack that probably the top four or five bats on there, uh, just depending probably Jeff McNeil, um, Pete Alonzo against a, th- a lefty here at home. Definitely love that Lindor. It just depends. Uh, probably the top four or five there, but I love Singa here. That's why he's the picture of the video and the article because he's my favorite pitcher on the slate. Then you got Miami Marlins at the Braves. You got Alcantara versus Bryce Elder. Alcantara, 136 plate appearances, 22.8 K percentage, and a 276 batting average. And then the flip side of that, Bryce Elder, obviously, he's seen enough of the Marlins. 41 plate appearances, a 314 batting average. I don't trust him. I'm looking at Alcantara here, cash or GPP. And then I'd definitely be looking at a Marlins stack. The Marlins bats that have had success against Elder so far in his career. Include John Birdie, two for seven. Birdie, if he gets on, is always a threat to steal, which is even more fantasy points there. And you can check out the stolen base uh, chart that we have on the website. It's uh, You can find the link in the description of this video as well. Avicel Garcia, one for six with a double. Uh, Jesus Sanchez, two for five with two doubles. Brian De La Cruz, two for three with a, a double and a home run there. Uh, Garrett Cooper. So, yeah, I really like Birdie. Um, just depends on who what the Marlins are going to throw out there. You never know their lineup, so definitely wait to see it. But I do like Garrett Cooper, John Birdie, um, and then we'll, we'll, we have to kind of wait to see who's going to be out there. Padres at the Cubs is next. Michael Walker versus Drew Smiley. Walk 100 plate appearances, 253 batting average, 21K percentage. Drew Smiley has had success against the Padres in the past. 109 plate appearances, 28.4K percentage, a 198 batting average coming off what he had as a perfect game until <laughs> I can't explain. I think it's the second worst perfect game blown situation. I would say number one is Andres Galarraga. Or uh, who is the Galarraga was the pitcher for Detroit when Jim Joyce absolutely just messed the. I mean, no matter what, you call that guy out, no matter what. Um, at first base, he didn't. He then apologized later. Perfect game, never went down in the books, and Galarraga was out of the league pretty quickly. Uh, Drew Smiley, uh, John Gomes jumped on his back to hump him. I have no idea what John Gomes was doing, or Jan Gomes. Um, but uh, yeah, I love Smiley here. Um, it's been fantastic this season. 
Uh, probably more of a GPP only because it is San Diego. It is in Chicago where balls do fly out of there a little bit more. That's kind of my thought process there. Oakland at the Angels. Don't know who's pitching for Oakland. Angels have Patrick Sandoval, 48 plate appearances, 22.9K percentage, 175 batting average. I don't mind Sandoval here for GPP, um, but we did see the A's hit pretty damn well on Monday night. Uh, came back and won, I think, what, 11 to 10, scored three in the ninth or 10th inning, and then uh, Angels scored two. But yeah, Sandoval for GPP, I don't mind, but I'm not going to have much exposure. And then the final game, St. Louis Cardinals at the Giants. You got Steven Matz versus Anthony Desclafani. Steven Matz, 42 plate appearances, 211 batting average, 31K percentage. And then Desclafani, 106 plate appearances, a 289, 20.8. I don't care about these numbers. Looking at the bats, Steven Matz doesn't scare me at all. And I don't think he scares anyone at all. Um, so the Giants bats have had success. Austin Slater's two for nine. Wilmer Flores, four, two for four with a home run. I mean, there's not a ton, but I still do not trust Steven Matz at all. I know this is a pitcher's park, though. Um, so I don't know if I have exposure to either of these pitchers, uh, but I will have exposures to the bats. So then the Cardinals bats against Desclafani, who've had success. Goldie's 14 for 27 with five doubles, two home runs. It's 519 batting average, absolutely smashing him. If I were to do the home run contest for us, probably would take Goldie. Um, don't know what inning yet, but that's who I'd look at. Uh, Paul DeYoung, 5 for 20, a double home run. Tommy Edmonds, only 1 for 12 with a double. Uh, Wilson Contreras is 2 for 11 with one home run. Tyler O'Neill is 3 for 11 with two home runs. So, yeah, I probably won't have exposure to either of these pitchers. I would definitely be looking at that late-night hammer pick here uh, with the offenses and the bats. So there you go. There are all of the uh, games on the slate. You've got the pitchers and then some of the bats we like. If you want to see more, you want to see the ones we like the most, click the link down below in the description that is today's video article. So in the description of this video is the article. You can also find our cheat sheets. You can find our stacks. You can find our um, core lineups. You can find the stolen base targets, the BVP, everything. So we went over some of the bats there, but if you want to check out the BVP chart to see how batters have faced, fared against uh, the opposing pitcher historically in their entire career, that is part of the BVP chart there for you. And yeah, that's really all I've got. Hopefully you guys had success. Let me know how you guys have been doing following these videos, following the articles, following everything that we bring out. Let us know. FanDuel DraftKings, have you brought home some bacon? Have you dominated? What has changed since you found these videos? Would absolutely love to hear and would love to hear what else you guys would like to see in these videos. Um, always looking to improve and everything like that. So that's what I got in this video. Good luck today and as always, bring them that bacon. Peace.